What's up, everyone, and welcome to XTEM All Access. My name is Justin Schaefer, also known as Mr. Fascinate, and I'm your host for this multi-day series showcasing some of the coolest minds in STEM. Today is day three of inspiring new XTEM episodes brought to you by the USA Science and Engineering Festival. The mission of the USA Science and Engineering Festival is to inspire the next generation about careers in STEM. You can check out their other free programs and events for teachers and students at usasciencefestival.org. Before we begin, please join me in thanking our partners, AstraZeneca, Discovery Channel, and the U.S. Space Force for making this XSTEM series possible. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Justin Schaefer, but the kids call me Mr. Fascinate. I speak all over the world to young people about the prospect of science and technology careers. I've also hosted TV shows with WGBH, Travel Channel, and Al Roker Entertainment, and I'm excited to be your host for these next few days, sharing my love for STEM with all of you. I hope you're as excited as I am to get started. Today, our topic is next-gen STEM, and we're going to meet some young superstar scientists whose scientific innovations are changing the world. We'll hear from Deja Taylor, a nationally acclaimed teen researcher who incorporates equity into science making life-saving medical technologies that are accessible to everyone. Later in the program, we'll be joined by Katherine Kim, a teen scientist and bioinformatics researcher who recently took home a top prize at the largest global high school STEM competition, Regeneron ICEF 2021. And in between, we're going to hear from some very special guests, including YouTube stars Collins and Devin Key, and the head of AstraZeneca's Oncology Research and Development Program, Dr. Susan Galbraith. You're not going to want to miss a single minute of this. Wherever you're tuning in from today, make sure you show us how you stem on social media. Get your parents' permission and share a photo or video of you doing your favorite science activities. Grab your phone and take a selfie while tuning in today. Teachers, show us what your students are doing in the classroom. Tag at USA Science Fest and me at Mr. Fascinate and use the hashtag show us how you stem. Speaking of selfies, there will be an opportunity for a virtual selfie with me later in the program, so make sure you have your camera on standby. Now, let's get started. I'm excited to introduce our first special guest, Dr. Susan Galbraith. Dr. Galbraith was recently named as the Executive Vice President of Oncology Research and Development for AstraZeneca, a global science-led biopharmaceutical business with innovative medicines used by millions of patients worldwide. In her role, Dr. Galbraith is passionate about developing medicines to improve the outcomes for patients with cancer. Please welcome Dr. Susan Galbraith. Welcome, future scientists. I'm Dr. Susan Galbraith. I head research and development for oncology or for our cancer medicines at AstraZeneca. And I'm delighted to be able to share my excitement for science and the important role of science in helping people. At AstraZeneca, we make medicines for people around the world with many different diseases. And every day, I use skills that I started to learn when I was your age. Science helps us understand the causes of illness and disease and provides clues for how we can treat people who are sick. My passion for science started at an early age. My dad was a physics and maths teacher, and he taught us all um, to constantly ask why and to think about what was happening around us, why it was happening, um, and, and to learn more and more. So I decided very early on in my life that I wanted to be a doctor, and I've loved every minute of my career. I've been able to work with amazing people from all backgrounds, and are, they have a common purpose, a passion to use science for the greater good of people around. So we can hear about advances in science and technology all the time. These innovations can help solve some very big challenges. Students just like you will grow up to help us answer big questions by like maybe exploring the solar system, curing disease, building supercomputers, or doing things we can't even imagine now. Science is fun, it's cool and informative, and it has the power to affect and improve the lives of billions of people. So if you're interested in science and maths, keep going. You can really make a big difference in the world. We've reached more than a million young scientists through a program called Generation Health, How Science Powers Us. We're also very proud of our Ask a Scientist series on YouTube. We've invited curious young people like you to ask some tough questions of the scientists at AstraZeneca. It's really important that you continue to ask questions and that you continue to work at the science and maths part of your education. These will enable you to do whatever you want in life 
And if you apply your mind to it, this isn't hard, it's fun. I hope that during XTEM All Access, you discover things that make you curious and ask more questions. That's the sign of a true scientist. You can learn much more on AstraZeneca's website about our commitment to young scientists and to hear more about our science education activities around the world. STEM is our future, but it's really all of you who'll make the bright future of STEM possible. Have fun, scientists. Thank you so much, Dr. Galbraith, for those inspiring words and special thanks to AstraZeneca for being a valued partner of the XSTEM All Access program. I'm excited to introduce our next speaker, Deja Taylor. At just 17 years old, Deja became a nationally recognized scientist by creating color-changing sutures that detect infection. Deja's invention was centered around equity, her main career focus, and making her life-saving medical technology accessible to everyone. You may have seen Deja on one of her many TV appearances like Ellen or The Dr. Oz Show. Deja, welcome. I'm super excited to hear your perspective on our stage. Hey, Justin. It's so nice to meet you. You have such a great team. I'm like so excited to be here. This whole XSTEM conference is going to be so awesome. I'm so happy to be a part of it and hopefully inspire some people with my story. So let's get right into it. So research one-on-one -on -one by a high school researcher. I am the high school researcher. On the next slide, um, you'll see I'm Deja Taylor and people usually call me a scientist or an inventor, but I just like to say that I'm a researcher who did something really, really cool. Um, so we're gonna do a little simple research breakdown, starting with my origin story and then some tips on how I went into the ideation phase, which is just how did I come up with my idea and how can you come up with yours? And then we'll go into the experimentation phase where I'll tell you kind of what I did and how you can have a successful experiment experimentation phase as well. So starting with my origin story, how did I get here? Um, so I started research when I was 16. I was a junior in high school. And prior to ever being introduced to scientific research, I did a lot of DEI work. DEI stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. So within this space, I was doing so many things with racial equity, gender equity, and LGBTQIA plus rights, et cetera. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love this so much. This is, this is what I'm going to spend my career doing. So I go into chemistry honors one day. Uh, which is in my junior year. And my chemistry teacher says, hey guys, um, this opportunity is for all of you. You guys can conduct scientific research in high school and enter it into various science fairs at the very end of the year. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. And on the next slide, you can see some of the mentors that helped me throughout this journey. So my first tip to you guys is to find some amazing mentors. So on the left, you'll see me and my mentor, Carolyn Walling. She's my chemistry teacher, and she helped me throughout this entire process, and she was so supportive. Um, on the right, you'll see my two principals, um, or two of three, rather. Uh, this is Greg and Luke, and they both helped me just get access to the building and actually help me with, um, with other opportunities that came to them personally. And they were really the, the foundation, along with my family, of course. But this is my origin story. I started with DEI work and I ended up in STEM. That's crazy. So how did I actually get to my idea? Um, so originally, I was like, I want to do biomedical research because I had a slight interest of going into the medical field for the same reason of that DEI piece, right? But I was like, mm, AP biology is not really going to let that happen. So I just continued with, with this chemistry honors course and I started reading articles after my science teacher had approached me and I told her, hey, this article is really inequitable, which means that they're, they're not doing something that could benefit all people, right? So I read this article and this article said that they created stitches that use this really, really fancy technology and not a lot of people could afford that, which is what I set in my mind. And 
I went ahead and I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it better than they did. And I'm going to do it at a more equitable price so that people all over the world can afford them. But specifically, people in developing countries who essentially die from surgical site infections that are going undetected or are detected late. So here are a couple ideas that can get you started with how you can come up with your idea. So number one is um, looking at science articles like I did. So I, my article was specifically from Science News for Students, which is a part of the Society for Science in Public, um, which also sponsors and puts on the Regeneron Science Talent Search, which is where a lot of you know me from. And that they focus on innovation and invention. Anything STEM related, they have articles and articles on it. Um, another idea is big data. Big data is where you use research that already exists out there to draw a new conclusion. So there have been a lot of studies on big data over the past year in the pandemic. Majority of the resources that have been used to, um, can, to conclude multiple COVID um, conclusions have been from big data. So if that interests you, go for it. And then you can just start kind of connecting the dots with how you're gonna finalize your idea. The next phase is the experimentation phase. And this phase is just as it sounds. This is the physical nitty gritty research, right? And for me, that included going into the lab and actually conducting physical experiments, right? Does this work? How does it work? Um, what elements, what variables can I add or take out to make this thing work, right? Um, well, there are a couple tips that I have for you guys in this experimentation phase. Believe me, I completely failed um, in multiple areas during this phase, but I also had great successes, obviously. That's why I'm standing in front of you today, right? But the tips for the experimentation phase is that it's okay to learn new spaces. It's almost mandatory for lab spaces. I had never stepped foot in a lab prior to my chemistry honors course. And so when I decided to take on research, I had to learn this whole new way of thinking and this whole new process for how things work in labs, right? On top of that, have frequent conversations with your mentors. They are literally game changers. So when I said, hey, Miss Walling, this is what I wanna do for my research. I was like, hey, this is the, this is the element that I wanna yield, I want to I want to end goal with color changing stitches. She was like, okay, that sounds very, very, very adventurous. <laughs> but I, I did it. She sat down with me and we had multiple conversations of what experiments that already exist that I could use to get the result that I wanted, that I needed. So those are my two tips for the experimentation phase and best of luck. Um, after the experimentation phase, I ended up entering my... Uh, my project into multiple science fairs. And these are some things that came out of that. Lots of prizes and, and trophies and plaques and whatnot. And it even landed me on the Ellen Show, uh, which is the next slide. Um, it's crazy that out of just one decision to go after what I wanted, which was to conduct scientific research, that all of this could happen. And it's easy for people to think that, that um, just because I was on the Ellen Show or because I have all of these publications that that's what matters most, but it's not. On the next slide, you'll see that there's that I'm standing next to a bulletin board. That bulletin board is in my old elementary school where I was one of very few people of color to go to that school. And during Black History Month, I asked them like, hey, what are we doing? And they didn't have an answer for me. So I took it upon myself to create a bulletin board of people that were very powerful in the black community and that students like me looked up to. It was from my culture. So that was, that was a huge success. They were very supportive in that effort. And after I left that school, they continued that tradition of putting up this bulletin board for Black History Month. And when my research started to take off and I was in the local newspaper, they then decided to make me the bulletin board for Black History Month. So full circle moments like that, that are actually changing the world and that are actually making a difference in our communities. It's what's important to me. So on the next slide, I have an amazing quote that I want to leave you guys with, which is be willing to step out of your comfort zone and explore a new area of interest. Okay. Be curious. And remember, 
within your research, you just might change the world. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you have an amazing time at the XSTEM conference. Deja, that's such a powerful perspective. Thank you for sharing that really unique take on oh. the world with us and your journey into wow. science research and exploration. Have a few questions for you here. Um, one of the things that really came to my mind as you were speaking is about how I know there's a lot of young people with big dreams and maybe they feel like they're not really taken, taken seriously by the world. So you know, what advice would you give to young people that are aspiring to do something uh, different like you did uh, and, and be taken seriously by adults? Yeah, so my first step is that you have to work on yourself and your self-confidence first, right? If you go into a building or let's say a meeting in my case, and you're not really confident in yourself and your message or your dream, then no one else will take you seriously either. That's a lesson that I had to learn. That's a lesson that my mom taught me. And I can say that like once I learned like what I actually wanted to do with my dream, I went and communicated that to a mentor or I like to call them my dream team because I have multiple mentors. Um, I was able to yield the results that I wanted. So because I wanted to go into STEM, I was like, hey, I want to do this research project. Please help me. And because I was able to communicate that to her, she was able to then help me with that end goal, at least in my phase one research. And then I was able to gather the tools that I needed from that phase to continue that phase and be an independent researcher on my own. Deja, thank you for sharing that perspective. And another thing I love to hear your perspective on is, I know in these short, quick presentations, a lot of times it can just seem like everything went perfectly smoothly in your journey. But as scientists, we both know that oftentimes experiments have catastrophic failures. So can you tell us about some obstacles you might have overcome or some things that didn't go perfectly according to plan? Absolutely. So there are a few times in my research where things did not go according to plan and that ended horribly. So specifically during my second phase of research, I was in the lab by myself because I had the tools to you know, be in the lab by myself. And <laughs> I was mixing up this new variable and I had no idea how it was going to turn out. It was a brand new idea on my part. So I was like, we're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to do it. I did it. And then I forgot like the very basic science principles that you don't want to forget in a lab. And that's that you don't add cold fluid into a hot beaker um, because the beaker will burst. Um, so I was, I had this hot mixture that I had just gotten off a hot plate and I had added this cold mixture that I thought was going to work. And I kid you not, the beaker, um, burst and spilled all over me and my brand new, um, my brand new joggers that I love. So. <laughs> and, uh, it happens to the best of us. I mean, yeah, I've definitely been there. I remember a lot of my experiences in the laboratory were, were not so good, but I think that's where you learn the most, right? Because you're not going to forget that yeah. lesson. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, so so you have these color-changing sutures out right now. What's next for them? Like, what, what's the next step in, in that product's evolution? So this is where, like, legality and, like, things come into play. So I have a provision, uh, um, utility patent pending, and I... I, I have like a whole team that helps out with that side of my research. On top of that, it's just making sure that these sutures are commercially viable, which means that I'm doing everything I can on my part to make sure that these sutures are safe and available for use when that time comes. And that's a, it's a pretty tedious process, but it's a process that's necessary for all researchers and all inventors because you want to make sure that you're protecting whatever you create or whatever um, conclusion, like big conclusion that you're coming to, right? Like whether it's publication, whether it's patenting, like you want to make sure that you're protecting your invention. So that's what I'm up to right now. Awesome, Deja. Well, you are definitely a superstar already, but I think your career is just getting started. So last question here. I'm really curious about you know, what's next for you in general? Are you working on other equity focused projects, more ambitious science projects? What's, what's, what's coming down the pipe? 
So this research keeps me pretty busy already. So I'm not really working on anything else science related. However, I just started college. I'm a freshman at the University of Iowa. So having that experience has been phenomenal. I'm actually in my second week of classes. And on top of that, I also have been doing some more DEI stuff throughout the summer as I, in conjunction like with my research, of course. Um, I've been on the equity advisory committee for my old school district. And since I'm staying in town, I'll be able to continue in that role which is phenomenal because that committee alone does so much for the students of color and, um, and LGBTQIA plus students in our district and so many other minority groups. So I'm so proud to be the inventor of the Color Changing Stitches, but also the co-chair of the Equity Advisory Committee. So it's, it's an amazing experience and I'm, I'm just kind of rolling with those three things. Yeah, and Deja, you're keeping yourself very humble, but you are absolutely doing phenomenal work. So thank you again for, I think, blowing us all away with your perspective on the world and, and the things that you're up to. And let's not say goodbye to Deja just yet. Deja, if it's cool with you, I think our audience wants to take a virtual selfie with you. So are you down for absolutely. that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you right. kidding? <laughs> all right, perfect. So here's how we're going to do it. So the first selfie we're going to take is going to be like a plain smiling one. And then the second one that we take is like a super goofy one where we kind of have some fun. Okay. So okay. we'll give a quick three second countdown here and then we'll get started. All right. So hopefully everyone has their phones by now. They're ready to take their selfie with us. All right. Three, two, one. Okay, and now we're going to do the goofy one here. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Get your goofy face ready, Deja. Three, okay. two, one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we always have fun with the virtual selfies. <laughs> Thank you so That's much. So awesome. And everybody, don't forget to share those selfies with us. Be sure to tag at USA Science Fest and me, at Mr. Fascinate, and Taronia.Deja and use the hashtag show us how you stem. Everyone, please give Deja a virtual high five and a round of applause. Deja, it was an absolute pleasure meeting you. And I am so, so, so impressed at what you've accomplished. And I'm sure you're going to be light years ahead in just a couple more years. I know you're just getting started. Thanks for joining us here at XSTEM. Thank you so much, Justin. Thank you, XTEM. It has been a pleasure meeting all of you. Make sure you share those pictures with me too. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So before we jump into our next speaker session, let's take a quick break with some very special guests. Chances are pretty good that you've actually heard about our next guests, Collins and Devin Key. They are brothers and YouTube superstars who created the world's largest family-friendly YouTube channel. With over 23 million followers, Collins and Devin are known for their hilarious challenges, crazy pranks, and fun DIY creations. I hope you're ready to have some fun. Collins and Devin, welcome to XSTEM. Thank you, Justin. Now, we are so excited to be here at XSTEM All Access, featuring the next generation of scientists. Now, we are obviously not scientists, but we do do a lot of fun experiments on our YouTube channel. So check out these crazy experiments and see what science principles you can find. For this viral experiment, you challenge us to make a crazy exploding elephant. Oh, what are you doing? I hit the thing! Holy I hit the table! What on earth? Okay. I'm sorry. Right, well, right now, let's clean this up, because we're making a Dude. way bigger one. So right now, let's go. Here we go. Right. Mask down. Time to go for it again. Do not try this at home. Three, two. One. Oh! oh Holy cow! Dude. Dude, that was insane! Nicely done! That was lit! Mm -hmm. Three, two, two, one, go for it! Go, 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 go! Is it going? Yeah. Yeah. Holy yeah. snap! Dude. Holy cow! Oh Wow. Oh my gosh, I had man. to get out of there so quick. Not to flex, Devin. I've got color-changing slime, bro, with oh. the glue right here. Oh, yeah, you do? This okay. stuff is literally like magic. The UV rays that change the color of this glue. Now time to add in the magical liquid into the color-changing glue. Oh my gosh, look at that on the inside. Whoa. Because the sun layer wasn't covering it. Look at how it's all yellow, and then it's going to change that? colors, man. And as you can tell, we've got these watermelons over here, and here's my idea. I want to test how high that bungee jump is by yeating these watermelons oh. off of the top yes. of it. I got to test this, man. This is scientific method. We gotta see if it's really that big of a drop. All right, here we go. Three, 
two, one. Oh, man, oh, it's coming wow. down. Oh, oh dude. Oh, my God. What? Did you see that? That, like, touched that building and Did that building that? and that building. Oh, my I gosh. That. I saw that. You challenge us to make liquid a light. All right, I'll kick it off. Here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa. What? Oh, my God. It's, like, growing underwater, bro. Dude, it looks like a jellyfish. All right, my turn. Here we go. Oh. oh. It's so cute. It's, like, smoke billowing. We're going to go for the most amount yet. You ready? Three, two, one. Oh. Whoa! I feel like we're in Harry Potter right now because this looks like a magic potion. No way. <laughs> it looks like lily pads are exploding. Yo! What? I think this is one of the coolest things we have ever done. Dude, that looks so cool. This viral experiment, you challenge us to take the cool level. No, 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 all right, we got the Coca-Cola rocket. Now it's time to see if it's gonna launch. Three, two, one. It worked. Okay, okay. okay. All right, what's going yeah, on? I think there we go. Okay. Wait, wait. Hold, hold, hold. I launched. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was absolutely ballistic, bro. I can't believe it, man. First thing we gotta do is fill these holes in the ground with a whole bunch of soda. So here yep. we go. Three, two, two one. one. Okay, there we go. Oh, this one's going, this one's going. What the heck, man? You gotta be careful with the other what? Oh my gosh. All right, wow. so here's this guy. Right. Dude, I don't know if those helped him, oh. man. I think those might have like stunted his growth. I don't think so, dude. Okay. Mine's bigger. This is definitely Look bigger. Look at that. It's this like is, a galaxy, yeah, dude. Yeah, this is definitely getting a lot bigger than mine. I'm starting off by making a high pressured water gun. Basically, the way it works, I've got a CO2 cartridge here. I'm gonna uh -huh. pop it on the back of the water gun and okay. hopefully it's gonna blast the water off. First, I gotta test to make sure that the CO2 can is actually gonna make the water go everywhere. All right, I've got some safety gloves on. Do not try this at home. Yep. Here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, there we go. Whoa. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Whoa! Holy cow! Look at the little crazy in the water, bro. Whoa! Holy cow! Where? Whoa! I think that's a positive test so You're far. You're dripping so. everywhere. I'm sorry, I mean, it's, yeah. just, it's just water. Now we're excited to hear from another next gen scientist. But first, back to you, Justin. Thank you, Collins and Devin. I spotted a lot of science at play, but I'm going to keep that to myself for now. Tell us what scientific principles you saw. Tag the Key Brothers at Collins Key and at Devin Key. And don't forget to include us at USA Science Fest. Don't forget to check out their YouTube channel, Collins Key, for more fun videos from Collins and Devin. If you're just tuning in, today's topic is Next Gen STEM, and we are hearing from the next generation of great scientists and innovators. I hope you're ready to meet our final speaker for the day. Katherine Kim is a recent high school graduate who was awarded the prestigious 2021 Regeneron Young Scientist Award. Her award-winning research aims to alleviate the severity of adverse drug reactions and pave the way for a safer drug design and distribution, all inspired by her family experience with multiple medications. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us. We're super excited to hear your voice. Hi, Justin. It's so nice to meet you. And thank you so much for having me on the show. It's such a great honor. And I'm really excited to share my own story and my own scientific research journey with all you guys watching from home. Hi, my name is Katherine Kim, and I'm from Jericho, New York. I recently graduated from high school and will be an incoming freshman at Brown University this fall, which I'm super excited about. Uh, these are some pictures of me on commitment day this year. And at Brown, I plan to study computer science and applied mathematics. So this past year, I competed at the International Science and Engineering Fair, which is the largest science fair for high school students in the world. So here's some pictures of me at the virtual pair fair, and I was honored with the first place award in the category of computational biology and bioinformatics, and was also honored with one of the top awards in the entire fair the Regeneron Young Scientist Award, which was given for my innovative approach to tackling pressing scientific issues with creative solutions. So for all of you student scientists who are curious about what pursuing research opportunities is as a middle or high school student, I'm here to share my story and scientific research journey with you all. So first, I wanted to talk a bit about how I got my passion for the sciences. 
So as a child, I visited science museums so much, I practically considered them my second home. So here's some pictures of me and my family on vacation, visiting all sorts of museums from Washington, D.C. to local museums around just around me. So for me, it wasn't just the fun exhibits or the bright colors painted on the wall that kept me wanting to return, but more about what it did for my own curiosity. And because of these visits to science museums, I was able to ask the more important questions. So not necessarily what, but why. So why were the bubbles I blew spherical? Why were the triangular structures I built with blocks more sturdier than other structures? Or why was a certain design of the wings for the plane more efficient and safe for the passengers? And it was really this way of thinking that helped me realize that science and math were not just my favorite subjects all throughout elementary, middle, and high school, but were instead much more. They were ways that I could use to explain how the world worked around me and explain the surrounding world. So whether it was how the different components of the cell allowed my body to function every day, or how the Fibonacci sequence explained patterns occurring in nature that I saw with my own eyes, now it wasn't just about the concepts and theories that I learned anymore, but more so about their applications to the real world and how I could connect these concepts and theories to things I saw with my own eyes. And it was really this type of mindset that opened my eyes to the power of science and math and really served as a foundation in sparking me on my own research journey. So now I want to take this opportunity to talk a bit about not only my own research project and what I did in my research, but also the inspiration behind it. So a couple years ago, one morning, I walked down the stairs into my kitchen where I saw my dad taking two medications together. So one was for his high blood pressure and the other was for his high cholesterol. And it was at this moment when I really took a pause and asked my dad whether taking these two medications together or potentially adding another medication together would be safe for his health. And when I asked this, he hesitated and he paused before telling me that he wasn't really completely sure about it himself. And at this point in time, I realized that no one really thinks about how there may be potential repercussions of using multiple medications together. And this kind of struck me as something that was concerning because especially in society today, Americans are taking prescription and over-the-counter drugs now more than ever. So there are so many potential adverse effects that can arise from medication that so many people aren't aware about. And I really wanted to address this concern with my own research. So after I had this encounter, I started, again, asking the important questions. So why might the consumption of taking multiple medications together not be safe for people like my dad? Or why are current methods inefficient in allowing for greater drug safety when discussing multiple medications together? So I followed my curiosity to my laptop and I started with a simple Google search just to get, just to introduce myself to this field of science. And then I started delving into published research journals that I found online. And I soon found myself reading a published paper about predict predicting the harmful effects of multiple medications in advance to help patients. So I looked at the authors of the paper and I quickly emailed the professor of the paper. And with this email, I grasped the opportunity to intern at his biomedical informatics lab, which was actually where I did my own research and interned for the past two summers. And after I was able to grasp this internship and also went through it in my first summer, this was when I realized that you don't have to wait to start delving into a science you're intrigued by. You can still be a middle or high school study student and study and research what you really love. 
So after making the first steps in my science research journey, I began to dig deep into where my passion really lied, which was predicting these adverse reactions of drugs and advancing drug safety using computational and bioinformatics methods. After months of working in the lab, and here's a little picture of where I, what my lab was like and where I worked every day before COVID, of course, I was able to create a novel hierarchical or multi-layered machine learning model that could accurately predict any adverse drug reaction for any and all drug pairs along with their pathological mechanisms, which allowed for a deeper biological understanding of the reaction at hand. And what I realized while conducting my own research was the power of taking an observation you notice in your daily life, for me being my dad's medications, which I observe in the kitchen. And at first glance, although it may not seem like much, I was able to turn it into a source of inspiration to follow what piqued my curiosity, and most importantly, it helped me turn it into a way to give back to society through science. Another thing I realized through research and talking with other student scientists, whether in my high school or through my encounters at the International Science and Engineering Fair, I realized that there's also a lot of self-doubt regarding the true implications and applications of the research you conduct and your power and its power to advance the scientific field and most importantly, its power to help other people. You know, it's that mindset of, I'm just a student, what possibly can I do to not only make novel findings in this field of science, but also what possibly can I do to make a change in this world, no matter how big or how small that change is. And I'm here to tell you all that the societal expectations and self-perceived limitations do not bound nor limit you in any way, shape, or form in terms of what you are able to accomplish and the goals that you're able to set. Your own scientific thinking, whether you know it or not, really holds the power to inspire other people to build upon the questions you ask and also has the power to help people improve some aspect of their daily life and potentially even save them with science. I hope that I, alongside all you other student scientists, break not only the boundaries of knowledge, but also our own personal boundaries and limitations. And I truly feel that once we get past that boundary and self-limitations, we'll be able to foster the future generation of scientists who will be renowned for their innovative thinking and for being able to change the world by solving the questions of tomorrow. I truly believe that in this case, the future is in the hands of the youth. And if you want to join this mission, you don't have to wait until you're in college or graduate school like you may think to get started. You can actually get started right now. There are so many resources, publicly available databases, platforms, classes, and online sites that you can use to learn about specific fields of science while also gaining specific skills that you need to conduct your own research. And all you need to do, which is, in my opinion, the hardest part, is to have a little faith and take the first leap. So really, if there's anything that intrigues you, a particular issue that piques your curiosity, again, there's really no need to wait. Take the first leap now, and all that's left to do from then is to follow where your curiosity and scientific thinking take you. I really advise you to be inspired to drive breakthroughs, not only in your field of science, but also breakthroughs of personal and societal limitations and boundaries. So what I want everyone to take away from this is that no matter what other people may say or think, your scientific research has a potential to help people. And that's really 
the most important and also the most rewarding thing about science, being able to help one, tens, hundreds, thousands, and even more people. I think that as a society, we should all continue to remember the human aspect of science and serve with a heart of empathy and compassion for humankind. And that type of mindset will truly shape who you are as a person, as it did for me. And it will really help shape what kind of legacy you leave on the world. So thank you guys for listening to my talk. And now I'm really excited to answer any questions. Thank you so much for that, Catherine. I know I'm personally inspired by your example. I think it's so cool that you realize like I don't have to be in a program yet to take initiative to solve problems that I care about. You are the embodiment of what it means to be a scientist and a researcher. And that is so awesome. So we have a few questions from our audience here and a lot of things that we wanna know about you. First and foremost, I know you're starting your freshman year coming up here. What are some things that you're most excited about? Yeah, thank you so much for that question. I'm super excited to be moving in in person this fall for my freshman year of college. And I'm excited to be opening and writing this new chapter of my life and really being my own independent self in college. And the thing I'm most excited about is just meeting all the different type of people in college. I look forward to meeting people of different life stories, interests, perspectives, life goals, and dreams, and understanding them as well. And I feel like encountering all these different types of people will not only let me learn more about say like different backgrounds and cultures, but will also help me broaden my overall outlook on just life. So thank you for that response, Catherine. I'm sure it must have felt amazing to receive that award this year. I'm really curious about really how it felt and also if it impacted your career plans for the future at all. So I was actually taking an AP test during the live award ceremony for the International Science and Engineering Fair. So I wasn't able to personally watch the ceremony live or witness the live news myself. It was actually after when I finished taking the AP test, I unlocked my phone to a lot of notifications from my peers, friends, and teachers congratulating me. and. I was a bit confused because I wasn't really expecting anything, but when I opened the link to the live ceremony myself, I was just in shock. I think I froze from where I was standing for a good 30 seconds to a minute, just trying to process the news that I had just won one of the top prizes in the entire fair. It was definitely a really special moment for me that I will remember forever, and I think that it really helped solidify my plans for the future to study more into computer science. Mm, got you. And speaking of the future, I mean, we got a lot of Americans out there taking a lot of different medications and it'd be really cool if your work had the opportunity to reach even more folks. So you know, what does the next step look like for that research? Yeah, great question. Um, I really hope that in the future I can make my research more specific for an individual patient. So I want to adjust my research to help certain individuals and take into account their own personal demographics for more specific and also more personalized results from my model. And I hope that eventually in the future that I can apply my model to real clinical trials for new drugs in the market. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, I've been fortunate enough to participate and even witness some really competitive science fairs in my day. And those things are like intense. So what do you have to say to young people that are starting that journey and what advice do you have for them to combat maybe feelings of nervousness? Yeah, of course, I was also super nervous myself when competing in science fairs throughout high school. But the one thing that I always reminded myself that always helped calm my nerves was telling myself that it's not 
really about being judged, but more about having an insightful conversation about your own research with someone who's so knowledgeable in your field of science. And I use it more as an opportunity to learn more about the field of science and also just share a very insightful conversation with someone else who knows the field of science really well. Awesome, awesome. I'm sure, Captain, that you'd be a great role model to middle schoolers, high schoolers, and folks out there. I wish I knew someone like you existed when I was in high school. Probably would have inspired me to do more. Are there any mentors or role models that inspire you? Yeah, great question. Yeah, so definitely there are um, a couple of mentors that I was always inspired by. So first would be the mentor that I interned under over the past two summers, which was Dr. Nicholas Tatunetti. And again, he was my own mentor at my lab, and he really inspired me and motivated me to conduct my own research and to pursue wherever my scientific thinking took me and also supported me in my endeavors. And I will be so grateful for him. Uh, for all of that. And another mentor that I've always been super inspired by is Grace Hopper. And basically, she was just a trailblazer in the field of computer programming and helped catalyze advancements in the design and development of computer technology. And she's been such an impactful person, not only just to me, but to so many other people, because she actually coins commonly used terms now, such as like bug and compiler, which are terms I use to explain um, my coding. So she's such an impactful person and she was just a pioneer in computer programming that I look up to. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's that's really cool. And I'm glad you shared that with our audience. And I know, Kat, I know that you are actually a multi-hyphenated individual, you're a multifaceted individual, and you don't just do science, right? So what are some other things that you do for fun? What other hobbies do you have? Yeah, so um, I love to play the bassoon. So that's kind of what I do in my free time. So I've been playing um, the bassoon ever since I was sixth grade. And actually this past year, I been able to participate at the all national um, ensemble. And it was just such a great opportunity to meet other musicians. And I've also fenced for my high school team. And I think that was just a really good way to relieve stress through exercise. And I also love to hike with my family. And actually, a couple of weeks ago, we went to Vermont, where we Basically, half of our trip was hiking. So, yeah, those are some pictures from Vermont and upstate New York where we just hiked our hearts out on vacation. And the last thing that I really love to do as sort of a way to relieve stress is also baking. And I think I love baking so much because it's sort of a science in it of itself with like the exact measurements and the reactions that happened when you put something in the oven, turning like batter into cake. And I just love to bake and share my food and see their reactions as well. Gotcha. Well, those are some awesome hobbies. I do agree with you. Baking is definitely a science. And I think hiking is really good for thinking as well. Kind of getting out there, getting in nature and letting your mind wander can sometimes bring out some really profound ideas. So Thank you again, Catherine. That's all the time we have today for questions. And I think that you are going to do some amazing things in the future. And I'm excited to see your progress. Please join me, everyone, in giving Catherine a virtual high five and a round of applause. Catherine, it was amazing having you on the show. And thank you so much for joining us at XSTEM. And again, I'd like to thank our generous partners at AstraZeneca, Discovery Channel, and the U.S. Space Force for supporting this XSTEM All Access program. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to tune in at the same time tomorrow for Returning to the Moon, featuring NASA astronaut Zena Cartman and NASA planetary protection engineer Dr. Mujigay Cooper. And don't worry if you can't watch live. 
the entire series will be available on demand at no cost. Visit usasciencefestival.org for more. Mark your calendars for our next event, the SciFest Virtual Expo in October. At SciFest, you'll virtually experience exhibit booths featuring hands-on interactive STEM content from hundreds of organizations. Catch superstar performances on the STEM stage, hunt for clues in the scavenger hunt, take selfies in the photo booth, earn points to win prizes, and so much more. It's going to be the bomb. SciFest is a free event, so don't forget to register at usasciencefestival.org. I'll definitely be there. Everybody, I've had an absolute blast here on day three of XTEM All Access. I'm so excited for you all to join me on day four. We're going to have an absolutely phenomenal time. I'll see you tomorrow.